Let's talk about ideal number theory from the popular constitutions of the Pythagorean order of death. Three. By five may all this be controlled to any outcome, for four cannot abide unless fifth, so six cannot abide unless seventh, nor twelve unless thirteenth. We are five. We add two. We are seven. We add six. We are thirteen. We add ten. We are twenty-three. Should five be revolved in seven, then eighteen judge the five. Should seven be revolved in thirteen, then sixteen judge the seven. Should thirteen be revolved in twenty-three, then the thirteen judge the ten. Should seven wisely guide in twenty-three, then the thirteen do not convene. Three, love, two, two, weds, one. The three are unknown in the five. Four, rule seven. Seven is underneath five. Five within seven are unknown to the seven. Seven has power over thirteen. Seven within thirteen are unknown to the thirteen. Thirteen can investigate twenty-three. The thirteen are drawn by lot from the twenty-three. Twenty-three is thrice five plus five times one plus three. Twenty-four men rule this country, pal. Twenty-three magistrates, and me. So, what is the meaning of these fourteen statements? Let's examine each one by one. One. By five, may all this be controlled to any outcome. What does it mean to say, by five? It means. By any five individuals, be they ape, human being, or angelic god forms. What does it mean to say, all this? All this refers to the whole structure of Atlantean government, which has five bund political religious parties, involved in running the Atlantean government. And the Lemurian Church Bank. What does it mean to say? May be controlled. It means that any five individuals can collude and conspire to shape and steer the direction and course for the whole structure of Atlantean government, if they were so inclined to do so. What does it mean to say? To any outcome, it means to say that this may be done for any motives, good or evil, and that it will still lead to unusually high success rates. Two. For four cannot abide unless fifth. What does this mean? For four cannot abide unless fifth. It means that in any so-called stable group of four people, they will uncomfortably seek a fifth member for their group, because, as the text is about to demonstrate, any even number group eventually desires to become an odd number group. 
This is a trait that odd-numbered groups of people tend to exhibit less often. This is because even-number groups are equally divisible, and therefore more fragile, as opposed to odd-number groups, where a tie vote becomes impossible, and there will always be a group motivator among them, continuing in shifts so that the party stays alive. So, a group of four people cannot abide or carry on in that condition without, eventually, needing to acquire a fifth to change the group dynamic. Three. So, six cannot abide unless seventh. Although this sentence is presented as a statement of its own, with its own unique full stop to demonstrate it can stand alone. It runs on in reasoning from the statement in the sentence before it, sentence two, and likewise carries on into the sentence after it, sentence four. Sentence three reiterates the rhythmic repetition that X sum cannot abide unless a Y sum is applied to it. Here the X is 6 and the Y is 7. Likewise, this refers to people in group theory. A group of 6 people will give way more easily than not to becoming a group of 7. 4. Nor 12 unless 13th. Likewise, this means a group of 12 people will likely soon become a group of 13, due to the expanding, but constant, dynamic between even and odd number sum groups. In an upcoming stanza, sentences 10 through 11, this mystery of number theory will be explained a bit further, but at this stage, still ending the first stanza at sentence four, suffice to say that twelve people will become a thirteenth religiously enough that it has become a trope in religious literature from the era of the earliest Babylonian zodiac on. Five. We are five. We add two. We are seven. We add six. We are thirteen. We add ten. We are twenty-three. Here, then, is a powerful chant buried in the midst of a multipolar, pluralist, democratic minarchy devised to work by stimulating the sense of rhythm and repetition. And we see this sentence, the second stanza, is also steeped in number theory. What is the significance of the sums in the left column? Five, seven, and thirteen. And what is the significance of the sums in the right column? Two, six, and ten. What then ultimately is the meaning of their bottom line? The sum 23. It is obvious enough that when we add 2 to 5, we get 7. When we add 6 to 7, we get 13, and etc. But why have these sums in particular been chosen? It is because 5 equals the bond parties in POD. 7 equals the chief executives in Atlantean democracy. 13 equals an Atlantean jury, and 23 equals the full Atlantean Senate. And just as the odd number sums on the left should be seen to ascend, the even number sums on the right should be seen to descend, such that from 10 we arrive at 6 by subtracting 4, and from 6 we arrive at 2 by, again, subtracting 4. 6. 
should five be revolved in seven? Then eighteen judge the five. So what does it mean for a group of any five individuals to be revolved while still within a group of seven? So what is a revolution? Well, the five star, being the smallest number sum at which true democracy can occur in a group of people, when it is revolved within a group of seven people, it means that five outnumber the remaining two, so their revolution will be successful. However, if this happens and the five stand alone, then the remaining 18 out of the 23 total senators will likely not side with the revolutionaries within the venerable group of seven chief executives. Thus, the full weight of force of the remaining 18 senators keeps the five initiates or conspirators within the seven chief executive order strategically in check. 7. Should 7 be revolved in 13, then 16 judge the 7. Likewise, although sentence 7 is delineated as distinct from sentence 6 before it and sentence 6 after it, it is also clear that sentences 6 through 9 should constitute a single third stanza. So we see the repetition of the phrasing, should X be revolved in Y, then Z judges X, as before and will follow, in this iteration as X equals 7, Y equals 13, and Z equals 16 where the seven are the chief executives, the thirteen the jury, and the sixteen are the difference between the seven chief executives and the twenty-three total senate members. 8. Should thirteen be revolved in twenty-three, then the thirteen judge the ten. So, should thirteen, the jury, stage a revolt within the 23, the Senate, then the 13, the jury, judge the remaining 10, because the 13 outnumber the remaining 10. This means that, if a jury revolts, the government will either bend to its will or else collapse entirely. To those who would consider such a failure to sustain the state a catastrophic tragedy, one would caution against allowing the five to revolt against the best will of the seven from within them. 9. Should seven wisely guide in 23, then the 13 do not convene. This stanza of sentences 6 through 9 concludes with the caveat that if the seven do not allow the five within them to turn the tables and incite revolution, then there will be no need for the thirteen, the jury, to convene, and thus no chance for the seven executives to stage a coup within the jury, and thus no chance for the jury to overthrow the Senate. 10. 3. Love 2. 2. Weds 1. The 3 are unknown in the 5. There is a legend in number theory. 1 loved 0, but 0 died. So instead, 1 married 2. But the 2 could not be considered wedded without a witness. Hence, three arrives. Three performs the ceremony, locking one and two in matrimony. 
the third is then free of the other two. This means in all groups of three people, there will arise a kind of love-hate triangle where X will love Y, Y will love Z, and Z will love X, while X will hate Z, Z will hate Y, and Y will hate X. This simple base 3 format is called the basis of all conspiracy and the Habaru method of mind control and is at the core of the whole conspiracy of civilization to have arisen since the era of the Hebrew captivity in Egypt, prior even to the so-called exodus. While 1 and 2 are distracted, they are being robbed blind by the third. The triangle, being the simplest 2D polygon, is also used in ritual magic as a space into which to summon a hallucinated vision of a demon or other ghost to enslave them into doing the will of the magician. But it is also written in this sentence, the three are unknown in the five, meaning that when there are three initiates in a group of seven, it will be impossible to discern who will succeed, the initiates of or the non-initiates among the chief executives. Unlike if the split is 5-2 or 2-5. When the split is 3-4 or 4-3, the season of the Pope is much more subtle. 11. 4 rule 7. 7 is underneath 5. 5 within 7 are unknown to the 7. 7 has power over 13. 7 within 13 are unknown to the 13. 13 can investigate 23. The 13 are drawn by lot from the 23. How do four rule seven? By four, interpolating with three and combining to become seven. This relates to the four elements and the three phases in ancient alchemy, where the four are water, air, fire, and earth, and the three are salt, mercury, and sulfur and modern atomic physics, where the four are gravity, electromagnetism, fission and fusion, and the three phases are solid, liquid, and gas, respectively. So, because in groups of people, a group of four cannot abide without becoming a group of five, we see again that this group of seven bows down to and is beneath the group of five. Because of the threat, the group of five poses to revolt within the group of seven. Thus, the five control the seven, even though the five are unknown within the seven. Who is an initiate and who is not? remains a mystery, so long as their votes remain tallied in secret. Likewise, this group of seven have power over it, if within a group of thirteen. And, just so, a group of thirteen can investigate the remaining ten in a group of twenty-three. So, in Atlantean democracy, the thirteen jurors are drawn by lot from among the twenty-three senators, including, among them, the seven chief executives. Twelve. Twenty-three is thrice five plus five times one 
plus 3. This simple enough equation may be the most convoluted in appearance within the entire POD omnibus. It means only that 23 equals 5 times 3 plus 5 plus 3 in relation to Atlantean democracy. This refers to the composition of the Senate as being comprised of 20 large senators and 3 public senators. So, of each lodge, there are 15 members, 5 masters, and 2 alternates per chair, required before being allowed to represent their local lodge in the global Atlantean Senate. So the five lodge masters from four elemental lodges comprise the twenty lodge senators, and the remaining three are the public senators. 13. Twenty-four men rule this country, pal. Here the jargon may seem rough by modern standards for speech, but this simply means that 23 people rule the world, referring to the Atlantean Senate, but that, given the liberty of each Atlantean citizen as their own national sovereign, then whoever is speaking constitutes an unspoken 24th member of the Atlantean Senate who can vote telepathically in absentia. The use of the term PAL is a Rosicrucian reference relating to the Knight Templar symbol of two brothers sharing one horse. 14. 23 Magistrates and Me The choice for the number 23 to be the sum for the number of senators in Atlantean democracy may relate to the 23 pairs of chromosomes in a diploid human cell, but this remains a mystery as of yet unexplored.